to Inside the Mind, the official podcast of Missouri S&T Athletics. Patrick Murphy here with you again. As always, we're going to be talking men's soccer today with head coach Rob Cummings and goalkeeper Davis Joseph. But before we get into that, I want to let you know this episode of Inside the Mind is presented by S&T Corporate Club member S&T Dining Services. I want to thank them for their membership in the Minor Corporate Club and support of S&T Athletics. Before we get into today's show, if you could please be a friend, tell a friend about it as we continue to tell the stories and talk with Missouri S&T student athletes, staff, alumni, administrators, and more. Uh, if you missed any previous episodes of the show, including season one, don't worry, we've got you covered. Head online to minorathletics.com, look, at, look under the Fan Zone tab of the website, uh, and check for the Inside the Mind podcast. All 24 episodes from season one and the first two from season two so far are all archived there, along with links to all the platforms where this show is available. Joining us first on the show today, first-time guest on the program, 2022 is going to mark his fifth season on the sidelines at the head of the bench for the Missouri S&T men's soccer program. Uh, as the Miners are coming off a 2021 season in which they recorded their highest win total since 2017. In his coaching career, he's made stops at St. Joseph's College in Indiana, Bethel, and Cal State Monterey Bay. And So please help us welcome Rob Cummings to the show. Rob, thanks for stopping by taking time to chat with us. I know uh, it's been a busy first couple of weeks of preseason training since it's a festival year, but how are you doing this morning? Yeah, thanks for having me, first of all. Um, it's been a lot, I mean, as, as you already mentioned, um, you know, it's preseason, and you're trying to work on a lot of things, and and it's not just preseason for the guys, but it's for coaches. You know, so I had a period there. I think I lost my voice for a little bit, a couple of days, and then I start to get the coaching voice back. But things are going well. We have a lot of new faces out there. Um, they're working hard, and they're doing everything I can ask. Every day we're getting a little better each and every day, looking to get a percent better than we were the day before, and so that's all you can ask for as a coach. So happy so far. For sure. Uh, new, as I said, new season coming up just around the corner. Um, you know, open, getting ready to open up on Friday uh, against Northeastern State at home. Uh, the return trip of that series went out there, beat them at their place last year, followed by Rogers State uh, on Sunday. Um, a couple of tough opponents coming up uh, to open the year, uh, but you got three of your first uh, four contests. You know, basically, you're, you're, you know, most of your non-conference slate at home uh, to begin the year. Uh, that third game being against Eastern New Mexico football. S&T football played them in a home-and-home home series a couple of years back. But um, being able to play those non-conference games at home to prepare for a tough GOVC slate, how does that help your club out this year? Um, anytime you can play at home and, and sleep in your own bed, have the same routine each day, it, it's obviously a benefit. Have your home crowd. I mean, it, you know, being in the – familiar surroundings it's it's great and so um, we're really hoping that you know the, the support system with being at home and our, our comfortable environment plus you know the fans and, and and student body that you know they'll come out cheering and help us to kind of you know get a you know a few victories uh, along the way but as you mentioned we're playing we started playing some very quality as we always try to do because in soccer, it, you know, it's not just conference, it's what you do in the region. So it's important that you put some very tough teams in there to give you an opportunity if you have success to get to the big picture, which is the NCAA tournament. Right. Um, you know, speaking of, of GLVC play, there's a little bit different look to the league this season. Uh, obviously, no more Lindenwood, no more USI as they are transitioning to uh, Division One beginning this year. Uh, but it's still, you know, a very tough league. You know, seven of the eight teams that were in the tournament on the men's side last year are back this year. What's your outlook for uh, the conference slate that begins on September 11th against Illinois Springfield? Yeah, you know, losing Linda Wood in, in Southern Indiana, um, you know, presented some challenges, especially in scheduling. And then losing two very good programs in, in all sports, um, you know, and so – you know, that's tough because, you know, you build relationships with your colleagues and all that. So we're happy for them. But the conference is still the conference. It, it, it's going to be very difficult. It's going to be very challenging. Um, it's going to be any day anybody can beat anyone. And so I, I think when you look at some of the changes, not only the teams we lost, but if you look a little of um, some of the changes with, you know, Indy coach going to Xavier and a few changes there and then some have transferred the D1 some graduation like we had losing 10 that there's a couple of teams that maybe wouldn't pop out that really could could come out this year because they didn't lose anyone 
and they were in each and every game. And so I think that's the thing you've got to watch out for is that it's going to be quite interesting because I think everybody lost a little bit of everyone, even SBU, who just hired a brand-new coach because they had lost theirs in June. So it's going to be interesting. I think it's going to be a very unpredictable conference because with the changes. And we you know we talk about it you know all the time and here myself and John and and, every, and all the coaches in the department for that matter the GOVC is just such a tough league week in and week out and you know anybody can you know end up uh, beating anybody else any any given matchup um, with the league being down to 13 schools this season the weekend scheduling looks a little different um, there's there's going to be one weekend every year where each team's going to kind of have a by bye so to speak they're only going to have one conference game. Um, Weekend that weekend for S and T, you'll be heading down to Tennessee to take on Union in your final non-conference match of the season uh, before four GOVC matches to close the regular season. Um, having that non-conference game sandwiched, you know, in between, kind of the, the that critical stretch of of trying to close out conference play strong. What does that opportunity uh, against Union present uh, for your team? You know, I think a lot will determine how we do in the first three. Um, non-conference how we approach that game because you know we have a conference game and then we turn around on Friday go to McHenry and play Maryville and so it, it's it's trying to not tax the players but at the same time trying to get an idea of what is needed in this game for us I mean if if we if we do what we want to do in terms started off you know with our conference victories then we can approach that game just a little different and it but in terms of the big picture and so determine it may be a game where hey we need this because again you know we're, our ultimate goal is to, is to win conference and, and to get the automatic bid but you also want to protect yourself and, and, and set yourself up to have an at-large bid and the non-conference portion is huge and union be, even though they're not in our conference that they're considered you know a region game because of touching state yeah. so that is a huge um, and you know where eastern new mexico is not conference but that doesn't count for us in the region because they're a non-test so it was crucial that we picked that up and i'm familiar with area i lived in jackson when i coached at bethel i know the school from the nia day so i mean they're going to be good they're in a great conference too so i expect but that's going to be the challenges managing the bodies our load hopefully we're knock on wood we're still healthy and then going and so it's just now who do we take do we pay some minutes it's just yeah we'll have to plan that out when we get to that point how are we feeling how we're we doing physically uh, you mentioned the uh, the injuries. Uh, you know, obviously late in the season. You know, it's just it's just the the amount of the workload that everybody's undergoing. Um, that that kind of happened a little bit last year, um, and that kind of helped, or it didn't necessarily help, but it de definitely kind of derailed what was a really really promising start to the season last year. Um, what do you think? You know, kind of how last year went. What you know, with all the guys that are coming back, and then obviously this group of newcomers. Um, you know, how last season went, using that as motivation to, you know, take that next step and be able to overcome things like that heading into this coming season? You know, I think the one thing I, I told my guys all the time, I'm a very transparent, you know, to the point kind of coach, as I would expect them to be to me, as I expect just to live my life. It's just, you know, let's not, you know, skate around it, let's get to the point. And so I told him, I said, you know, we started off 5-1. There was a reason, you know, things were going. And the thing is, I think people don't realize is even before our season, we had to get through three starters not being with us, with two, two of them have, being Sean and Joe having season-ending injuries. And then Bertram, who was our true freshman, who led us in goal for the first time in 1991, led us as a true freshman, not deciding to come in the 11th hour. So we got through that. You know, the first game was shaking, then we, we, we got things out. Then we got injuries. And I think what it showed was I felt – Person, as I told that, I think two things happen, and I have to take responsibility as well. And that we're, you know, it's a we thing. So this is togetherness, complacency, and then guys not stepping up. The the next guy up mentality. I don't think we did that well enough because I think the consistency side of the doubt crept in a little bit. And I always tell everybody to be successful, you gotta you gotta embrace suffering. In order to win, you've got to suffer. Now, some suffer maybe what looks like a little less, but I believe every team suffers at one point. Even the Indies of the world, they suffer, but they just, you know, they're able to overcome it. And so I think that's the big theme is embrace it and then let's learn from it. Um, you know, speaking about stepping up and everything else, um, you mentioned it, you know, there's you know plenty of new faces on the team this year, but there's a good mix of returners as well. 
Um, out of that re group of returners, who are you kind of looking to to help step up and take on more of a role this year? And who are some names out of that new group? Um, you know, either newcomers or guys that have been around for a bit but haven't necessarily played a whole lot that, you know, you think people should uh, should kind of keep an eye out for this year? Sure. Um, you know, it's hard because I'm going to leave out guys that are going to be big contributors for us because right now we're not going to have all the answers and I'm not going to have all the lineups right. However, I think, you know, when you look at the returners, I think we can look at, you know, we've got two seniors that are losing. You know, they're going to be done no matter what because eligibility. So that's Evan and Jason. Obviously, Jason was an all-conference player the year before. Last year, he struggled with only a couple of goals. So I'm obviously hoping that he comes in, he can contribute a little more. And then for he Evan, it's, you know, staying healthy. He's a big part, but, you know, he has to just stay healthy, manage his load and everything like that. I expect a lot from Jimmy Sanchez, you know, step in. He got a lot of minutes as a freshman. I'm hoping he takes that next step. And as well as other guys like Robert, who became a full-time starter when Paul Benham, you know, one, you know, one of our best attacking outside backs that we've had in this, um, you know, program, you know, graduated and left. And I think now he, he had a year under his belt as a leader. And, there, and there's many other getting Joe back from season and injury because he's a big voice. You know, he's you know, he's somebody who's played from day one since he got in in 2018. And so getting him back, it, you know, I'm expecting. But there's many others like Tony, who's kind of bought his time, you know, wanting more and he's put in the work. He had a great uh, summer. So we're hoping he contributes more minutes and, you know, doing really well right now is Grant, who I felt I, you know, you talk about the sophomore slump a little bit, but he had some things come up. In, but I've seen his greediness come back and his attitude and his, and his love for the game. And, and there's others. Now, in terms of the new guys coming in, I've been very pleased with, you know, to be honest, with all of them. And, you know, it's hard to pick just one, but I'd say, you know, you've got Owen Vernon, you know, a player from Illinois. He's doing very well for us. Caden Archer is doing very well, um, uh, uh, you know, coming out of St. Louis as a center back. Then Sam, you know, he scored a goal. You know, our true freshman scored a goal another day. And so I think they're, those three guys, you know, contributing. Connor, you know, he's from Canada. He, he's contributing well. He's a quick player, great left foot. And then there's others that you can start. You're seeing them, you know, gain that confidence, gain that confidence. And, and like I said, this conversation today it may be different in adding names to it by sure. the time, you know, we hit the season or even midway. So. Uh, one thing I do want to ask you, and I don't, I don't have it written in my notes, but it's one thing I do want to I try to ask all the coaches whenever we have them on, uh, at least for the first time. What you mean, and, and you've been well traveled in your coaching career, um, you know, Tennessee, California, you know, Midwest, everything else. What is it, in your opinion, that makes Missouri S and T such a special place to be at? Be, you need special people to be here, because I, I tell recruits uh, all the time. We are a major Division One academic institution. When the, the numbers don't lie, I, I know I tell recruits the one thing that's going to be constant with all coaches. They're going to tell you their program's great, and they're going to tell you their academics are great. Otherwise, why would you ever go there? But I think when you look at what we have here, the numbers say who we really are and who we're sitting at the table with. We're sitting at the table with the MITs of the world, the Harvards of the world, the Stanfords of the world, and 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 we're silent partners. I like to say. You know, um, you know, so you need a special person. You need a special, you know, uh, player that realizes you're really looking at the next 40 years of your life. You're not coming it's in It's not here. just this next four. Yes, right. it, 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 not a place like here. Because generally when you think of college, and, you, and the social part should be a big part of it. I, it's part of your growth. But that can't be the ultimate first, hey, I'm choosing to go there. And there are some that choose because they want to be a part of the social scenery, maybe even more so than other ones. But here it's really about – I never say sacrifice, investing time in your studies and then for our student athletes on the field. And then after the four years, then you're able to pick. I mean, our 10 guys, they're spread that graduate and have jobs. They're spread through California, Texas, and beyond. And so I think we've proven, you know, what our, our degree is worth. And not just in STEM, but, you know, in business, you know, in, in a psychology. And so I think you, you have to realize when you come to a school like here, I always tell everybody, Everyone at our school could get into any other school, but not everybody could get into here. Right. And I think you need to wear that badge with pride because it is something special. You know, it, it is a very, very prestigious, you know, academic, you know, institution like you mentioned, world, world renowned. Um, you know, people are coming from all over, the, all over the world to to come here, and, and you know that from recruiting and, and everything else. And you know, as somebody who went to school here and, and has a couple of degrees from here, it's you know. 
just having you know be, being able to say oh yeah I went to S and T it, it it carries a certain kind of weight um, you know once your time as a student or a student athlete is is done here um, uh, go ahead and kind of start to pivot into wrap things up here uh, what's one thing you're looking forward to most about this upcoming season and if you can't think of one thing it could be a couple things sure I just think growing each and day but enjoying the process. I think, you know, that's what I'm looking forward to, seeing us grow as people, as individuals. Um, you know, we get wrapped up of just the Ws, but then I think sometimes we lose what's the big picture to me is to seeing that young man become a man and, and, and seeing, you know, um, them develop as people, their interaction with each other and that relationship, how that goes, and, and just within the campus. So I'm excited to see us grow. I'm also excited to see that, you know, this is the first year that everyone here has been somebody I recruited or I've only coached. I mean, I, I love all my teams I've had since I've been here, but there is something to be said with that, hey, the only voice they know is my voice. And so I think this group is bought in. And, and you know, it's funny because, you know, recruits always ask me the same question, what's your team chemistry like? And I said, well, all I can tell you, 17 guys went to spring break together. I don't imagine there's many other programs across the nation that had that many. So the closeness and seeing them just – develop closer and and to and to you know just see the soccer take care of itself and I, I think we got an exciting group I mean and and, and I love our group and ult the ultimate goal is to get to the conference tournament win the conference tournament get to the NCAA tournament win a national title I don't believe personally I've never been taught to believe anything but the biggest goal which is being in Seattle and then from there what are the steps that are going to need it and so that's, I think, the talk we tell them is I go reverse order. I talk what a Final Four team looks like and what is it we're going to need to get there along the way. And so, no, I'm excited to see our growth. And I'm excited to see how we grow today. Can we play an exhibition game against Mo Baptist tonight? And we're going to have a chance to grow and learn. So. Awesome. Well, Rob, I appreciate you taking time to, to stop by and chat with us. I know these first couple of weeks – uh, are always a busy one, uh, you know, running, you know, two a days and everything else, uh, you know, and having that couple week period before the uh, the semester starts to just focus exclusively on on soccer and everything. Uh, but no, I, I know you're know you're busy. Appreciate the time. Uh, good luck this season, and thanks for taking time to, to stop by and chat with us. Hey, and I appreciate um, you having me. And you know, this is special. I mean, not saying anything, but it's it'd be a special time to be able to have this conversation with you and, and really enjoy it and, you know, embrace it. So thank you for having me. Awesome. That's Rob Cummings, head men's soccer coach here at Missouri S&T. We're going to step aside, take a short break. We'll be back on the other side with goalkeeper Davis Joseph here on this episode of Inside the Mind, again, presented by Missouri S&T Dining Services. This episode of Inside the Mind presented once again by Missouri S&T Corporate Club member S&T Dining Services. We want to thank them for their membership in the Minor Corporate Club and support of Missouri S&T Athletics. Joining us on this men's soccer preview episode now, he's in his third season with the men's program here in Rolla. has appeared in 14 career matches, including 10 last season as one of the primary net minders for S&T as he made eight starts. He's recorded 38 saves in 900, or 797 minutes uh, in goal in his career. Has a goals against average of 1.81 and logged a trio of shutouts. From Andover, Kansas, please welcome number zero, Davis Joseph, to the show. Davis, thanks for taking time to stop by. I know uh, we haven't quite gotten to the start of the semester in the academic year yet, but I know it's been a busy first couple of weeks of training. Uh, how are you doing, man? Yeah, thanks for having me, man. It's been good. Um... This year it's been unique because I didn't know anything about this until we started, but I guess it's a festival year, mm -hmm. uh, which means um, that all the Division Two fall sports have the national championships played in the same place. And yep. so what that also meant is an extra week of preseason. So anytime, I think it's going to be 16, 15, 16 sessions, somewhere in the order of that, and then three matches that we're going to be playing in the span of two weeks. So physically it's been pretty taxing, but mentally 
we're, I think we're all feeling pretty good, pretty excited for the season. So right on, right on. Yeah, no, festival years are always a great opportunity just because it's you know all the a lot of the national championships ha- happening all at the same time for a bunch of different mm-hmm. sports, but. Uh, you know that report date's always a little bit earlier, and that uh, that that grind of the season, at, you know, is extended by an extra week or two there uh, on the front end as well. Um, speaking of that new season, we're just a couple of days away from getting going uh, next Friday at home uh, against Northeastern State. Uh, tell us, how are you feeling, and uh, what's what's kind of the feeling and the vibe within the program heading into this 2022 campaign? We're feeling good. We have a lot of new guys that all seem to gel pretty well and seem to be enjoying their time here. Uh, I think we're all looking forward to the season to get going. Um, One thing about Northeastern, I know actually a good friend of mine from home plays for them, and so they don't lose anyone from last year. And I know they're going to be hungry to get some revenge on us after uh, we knocked them off at home last season. So it's going to be a dogfight. We have to come out ready to play and uh, take things one match at a time. Right on. Um, You're the veteran in the goalie room this season. one of two returners on this year's team, but uh, you're the one that got the, you know, with the most experience coming back. Uh, what were some things you were able to pick up uh, from playing alongside Michael Sally the last couple seasons that you're able to help bring uh, bring to the front now to help elevate your game and also kind of work with the rest of the goalie room uh, with Luke um, and then also the newcomers with Chase and Cabot? Yeah, one thing about Mike that he did very well, he was very, very consistent day to day. He was very um, – he was able to turn around from day to day and, and keep the level high and uh, be very um, consistent, you know, in terms of just playing day in and day out that I've struggled with in the past. I know other, we've all struggled with that in the past, and that's one thing Coach talks about more than anything almost is just can we be consistent day in and day out. And really, you know, I think that the first person that is able to make 18 to 23-year-old athletes carbon copies of themselves you know, from one week to another is going to make themselves a very, very wealthy individual. Um, Because it is hard. It's hard to do. uh, But the best find a way to do it. And so that's one thing that I've been trying to do this season is just, you know, let things not not obviously take it very, very seriously still. But sometimes I would get locked into this mindset of, okay, let's go in, have a great day. You know, don't don't screw up anything too bad. But you can't do that. I've been trying to just loosen up a little bit, relax a little bit, really try and enjoy it. And then – I think for the new guys, they've raised the level for sure. They're very, very good. And I think for, you know, us returners, it's not, it's definitely not an us against them kind of thing at all. It's, we've gelled pretty well. I think it's a good group. Everybody's you know, coming together. You know, everybody's, mm-hmm. you know, vying for those, you know, those spots in the lineup and then, you know, with those reserve roles. And there's a good, a good amount of friendly competition, it right, sounds like. Right. You know, a rising tide lifts all boats. So we got to make sure that we're the best that we can be day in and day out. So. Right on, right on. Um, you've been around the GOVC for a couple of years now. You know what the league is like, and I know we talk about this, uh, myself and John and, you know, all the other coaches. You know, it's it's a tough league top to bottom, for no sure, matter what sure. sport uh, you're looking at. Um, once we get to that conference schedule beginning in, uh, you know, about mid-September, uh, what's one thing you're looking at um, and kind of what's your outlook for conference play once we get to that portion of the schedule this year? Yeah, well, top to bottom, the GOVC is a very, very competitive conference. We've had – you know, Elite Eight appearances, Final Four appearances uh, by some of the teams in the conference. So I think the biggest thing for us is we got to take things one game, one half even at a time, and not start looking ahead, you know, to other games in the schedule because the reality is every game in this conference is a dogfight. Yeah. And so if you're not ready to play every single Friday night and every single Sunday afternoon, then you'll find yourself in a position that you don't want to be in. And so I think for us – I think the story of last year is we got to be able to handle adversity better. We got to be able to let things go. Um, we had a really, really hot start in the in September of last year, and then it seemed like we picked up a few injuries. Things didn't go our way, and then the wheels fell off. Things gotta, just kind of compounded. Yeah, and one we got to be able to yeah. just you know cut it off, move on, and pick back up where we left off. And, and instead of letting things just snowball out of control, so. Yeah, yeah. So you know, seven of eight teams that made the uh, men's tournament last year, uh, you know, back you know, will be in the league again this year. Uh, at Lindenwood, the exception, uh, mm-hmm. making that transition along with Southern Indiana to Division One this year. Uh, you mentioned, you know, the the the, the hot start last year, um, dropped the opener to a very tough uh, Midwestern State team. Um, mm-hmm. Came back, beat Northeastern uh, at their place, and then you know, you won four of your first five, and then. Uh, 
things kind of got stopped, you know, almost dead in their tracks. Uh, that that almost, four yeah. that four zero loss to Rockhurst at home. Um, you know, a few injuries here and there. Some some hard luck losses at home. I know there was. Mm-hmm. Uh, an own goal uh, in, in one of those games that, or it was a, you know, it was yeah, a, 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 a deflection, you know, off of somebody yeah. in overtime, um, you know, and then, you know, there was, there was another one, you know, somebody had a, a header off a set piece. Um, but how can the team coming into this new year use the motivation, at least as far as the returners and everything go, mm-hmm. use how last season went as motivation to change the narrative in 2022? Yeah. I mean, we've had really three consecutive seasons of just missing the conference tournament. And so I think first and foremost, we got to fix that because I think there's just too much talent in that locker room for us to go. You know, I don't I don't think there's one player uh, still here that's been on a team that went to the conference tournament. And so I think we've got to change that first and foremost. Um, yeah, I mean, at the end of the, it just comes down to can we bend and not break? Right. Can we not beat ourselves? And can we – you know, win a, can we win ugly? Yeah, I think we want to, a lot of the time, we want to just, you know, pass around, play the game, really beautiful, and mm-hmm. that's great, but the score doesn't reflect that. Right. The score reflects balls in the back of the net and how many did you let in. So we've got to go into every game, doing willing to do what we have to do, whatever that is, willing to be willing to adapt on the fly, be willing to change things uh, in order to get the win because that's all that matters at the end of the day. Go ahead and pivot a little bit here away from soccer uh, for a moment and, also, and talk, kind of talk about uh, the academic side of things and your experience as a student athlete here at Missouri S&T. What's that been like for you? Uh, it's been wonderful. There's a really great community of athletics that's really starting to form in the last you know two or three years. That's been awesome to be a part of. Um, the school obviously is one of the most form- foremost uh, academic institutions in terms of STEM um, in the country, which is just awesome to be a part of. Um, you know, every day, you know, when you're in the classroom, it's an absolute pressure cooker. You know, professors, no, they don't care that I, I, you're I've, I've been there, man. I, yeah, I get yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, professors don't care that we have to get up at five in the morning, you know, three or four days a week. They don't care that, you know, we, you know, don't get to do a lot of the things that. They, they just care that you get your homework submitted by exactly. 11.59 p.m. on Wednesday night. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And that you show up for your exam that, you know. They don't care if you study or not, so that's all. It's all on you. So you got to find a way to manage um, the responsibilities that come with being a student athlete, as well as being a student here. You know, a lot of my friends at big state schools, they get a, you know, go out and party for three or four nights a week. We just don't get to do that, and that's you know, you know that when you come here, when it's you know all baked into the cake. And I think everyone here is okay with that. And if they're not, they wouldn't still be here. Um, but the fact of the matter is that once that school starts, is it's it, you got to have your ducks in a row. Otherwise, uh, it's very easy to fall behind, and um, that's not it's not the place you want to be in a classroom. So. Um, talk about uh, when you were going when you were in high school and you were trying to figure out where you were, you know, wh- where you wanted to continue your education at, and also you know try to you know extend your soccer career as well. Mm-hmm. What was it about Missouri S and T? Uh, that led to your decision to ultimately attend here. I know you mentioned the you know, obviously the first thing everybody mentions is the academics, but what mm-hmm. specifically was it about Missouri S and T compared to the rest of the places that stood out the most to you? Um, I think the simplest answer I can give to that question is academic prestige. Mm-hmm. I decided pretty early on, you know, sophomore junior year, that I wanted to study engineering, and then from then on, it was a matter of can I find a school that firstly offers a great engineering program but then also the the soccer part was secondary for me and I think that's the case with a lot of athletes here a lot of uh, people here in general is that the school came first and then the soccer came second for me and fortunately for me coach Cummings gave me an opportunity to play here uh, so I took it Uh, been very happy with that decision met a lot of wonderful people made a lot of great memories and so I think Raleigh is a great place to come and get a great education yeah, That's why I enjoy it. Uh, it, absolutely, it is. I know I, w- I was a failed engineer here, but I still ended up with two degrees from here. But it's you know just everything about being here is just it. it the people um, are just you know everybody says you know there's everybody you know it's every, there's kids everywhere are special, but it, I think even more so here. Uh, just, uh, according to I know things change whenever we update roster buys and everything dual major right or yes, that's aerospace correct. and mechanical <laughs> yes that's correct uh what was it about those two fields specifically that appealed to you and like did you know like hey okay you, you said you figured out okay like sophomore year i want to do engineering like when did you figure out what specific area of engineering you wanted to go into um actually that was actually a very natural decision for me 
Um, when I was a little kid, I wanted to be a pilot more than anything. I just loved airplanes, and in fact, I have pictures when I was, you know, three, four years old. I think I was a pilot for Halloween every year. My mom got me this little, like, toddler pilot costume that I wore every single year until I grew out of it when I was a little kid. And so that decision was very natural for me. Um, when I came in here my freshman year, I actually was not double majoring with mechanical engineering. Uh, there is a couple of events that um, nudged me towards that decision, though, the first of which being I was interning at the National Institute for Aviation Research in December and January of 2019 and 2020. Okay. Um, and I don't know if you remember, but during that time, there was a, one event this Boeing plane, a few Boeing planes crashed called the 737 Max. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, that was a big deal for me because uh, in Wichita, Kansas, this is at McConnell Air Force Base, Spirit Air Systems is right next door to me. Mm-hmm. And I would look, I could literally look out of my window and I watched that parking lot go from uh, being full every day to being maybe half full every day mm-hmm. or almost overnight. And so that kind of uh, gave me a, a first hand look into the inside of how cyclical the aerospace industry is. Um, and so that kind of raised some alarm bells. But then when COVID hit, um, that decimated uh, oh, yeah. a lot of jobs. That, that hit everybody. Everyone, hit everyone, but especially right. in the aerospace industry because they just everything got, everything just got shut down. Right, yeah. right. And so that parking lot, I, that really emptied the went, parking Went lot. from half empty to empty, empty right. real quick. Exactly. So that kind of cued me in as to, hey, you know, if I'm working and COVID-20 hits, I still want to be able to put food on the table. And so I think – being a mechanical engineer is um, sort of your cookie cutter can work anywhere engineer, and so I think that just gives me a bit of a safety net. There's also you know? a lot of curriculum overlap, or, yeah, or, there is, or a there decent is. amount because those, yep. those are both out of the same building, same department. Yep. Yeah. So, so that was that made a lot of sense for me as well, is because um, I wouldn't have to go too far out of my way to get both. So from a safety net perspective, right. you know, I'm hoping to one day have more on the line than just what am I going to do this summer, you know. So I want to definitely want to be able to provide. Uh, in no, essence. for sure. No, 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 that makes sense. Um, we'll go. I, we'll go ahead and kind of get this get this segment here wrapped up. I always like to try to end uh, end every every segment with every guest a little something fun. Um, I was going to ask you something. What what's one thing that stands out from your time here at S and T? Could be any kind of memory. But I was informed by Coach Cummings, who's currently sitting behind the cameras off screen right now, that you're a bit of a deep think deep and philosophical thinker. Um, when it comes to all things. So uh, do you have any pearls of wisdom that you would like to uh, to drop on us? Yeah, I'll, um, give you one. I'll give you a little nugget. Um, you know, my career here, we've had some ups and downs, in, you know, but um, Frederick Douglass wrote that there can be no progress without struggle, uh, which I think is true, but I would add to that. What I would add to that is there can be, you can't struggle with something that you don't care about. And so I think the fact that we've had struggles as a team and as individuals is demonstrative of the fact that everyone's heart is in the right place. We want to move this program forward for ourselves and for one another. And so hopefully we can bring that together this year. Good. It applies to, it applies to soccer. It applies to life. And hopefully uh, that resonates with, you know, somebody that might be watching or listening along with this one. But uh, Davis, I appreciate you taking time to yeah, stop by and you. chat with this us. Is awesome, man. Uh, appreciate good, it. good luck this season, uh, both on the field and in the classroom. Uh, appreciate Thank the you. time and uh, we'll see you around. For sure, man. Thank you. That's Davis Joseph stopping by to chat with us here on this episode of Inside the Mind, again presented by Missouri S&T Dining Services. That'll get us wrapped up for this week's show. We want to thank you all again for taking a little bit of uh, time out of your day to spend it with us. Appreciate your support as always. Don't forget to subscribe to the show wherever you may follow along, uh, be that Google Podcast, Spotify, TuneIn, Deezer, or YouTube as well. If you've missed any previous episodes of the show, be sure to head to the Fan Zone tab of MinorAthletics.com. Look for the Inside the Mind podcast. All previous episodes are archived there, along with links to all the platforms where this show is available. Thank you again for your support. Without it, we would not be able to continue to having, keep having these awesome conversations with our student athletes, staff, administrators, alumni, and more. We appreciate you again taking time to listen, and until next time, cheers and go Miners. Go Miners.